we have all done this transaction before. It's a basic pattern, read some data and update the current value depending on itself. But this is completely wrong and will corrupt your database. In between, we could have another unrelated write changing the red value. The reason has to do with the third hard thing in computer science, parallelism. In this specific case, it comes down to isolation. When I say that another write could come in here, that might seem strange, because we're running in a transaction. By making one tiny change, we can make it work as expected. We insert an update query to the row we want to read before we read it. This update is a no-op. It keeps the value as is. So what happens now? Well, first the update runs, doing nothing. Then we read. And now the other query comes in and tries to update the row, but it doesn't actually execute. Instead, it waits for our transaction. The first update made Postgres lock the row for the left transaction. And the lock remains for the duration, i.e. until we do the final commit. That's when the right transaction can start executing. But why doesn't the first query work? Well, the thing is, both these results could be correct. It comes down to what you define a correct transaction is. One part of defining that is the isolation level. And of course, we don't only have two of them. That would be way too simple. There are actually four different ones. Read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. The differences are subtle and only manifest on race conditions. Meaning you might only see issues caused by isolation levels on very tiny subsets of your data. So it's very nasty to deal with and debug. With read uncommitted, you can read other transactions data that have not actually committed. A dirty read. It's completely broken and I have no idea when you would ever use it. So just don't. Read committed doesn't have that problem, yet it still has the issue of reads not being repeatable, like the example at the start. If we do two reads and an update runs in between, the two reads will return different data. Repeatable read, as the name implies, doesn't allow that to happen, but it still has one more issue. If we read all data twice and something writes a new row in between, the second read returns that new row. That's called a phantom read. Serializable isolation solves that as well. As you might have noticed, each isolation layer adds more guarantees on the reads. Serializable doesn't have any of the issues of read committed. It's considered the most perfect isolation level in terms of safety. To solve the problem at the start of the video, we must use either repeatable read or serializable isolation. In Postgres, the default level is read committed and thus we get the issue. So how do we switch isolation levels? It's super simple. Just add isolation level serializable to your begin clause. And now the query becomes correct. But instead, we get another problem. You may start seeing errors saying could not serialize due to concurrent update. This causes Postgres to roll back your transaction. That happens in the case we read a value that is later updated by another query. Generally, you would handle it by rerunning the transaction from the start, but you might have other business requirements. I don't know. You could also use repeatable read, but you would still get the above issue. I would say if you're changing it anyways, just use serializable. But why isn't that the default? As with many good things, it has a cost. In this case, performance. When people choose databases, they generally look at transaction throughput. Who cares about this esoteric concept of isolation levels? You would have never clicked if I wrote isolation in the title. The cheapest way for vendors to improve transaction throughput is by lowering the default transaction isolation level, leading to a race to the bottom. Also, during high contention, you might get many serializability errors. That will further reduce performance. Sadly, I didn't find any graphs of people testing this, and I'm too lazy to do it myself. But the performance impact on the database doesn't matter. You should choose based on correctness. Anything else is crazy. If you have non-trivial features, offloading consistency to the database will be faster. And most devs vastly overestimate their ability to write correct code on lower isolation levels, which leads to more bugs, customer impact, monetary and reputational loss. 
Future features are also slowed down from fixing the bugs. Not to mention, these kinds of bugs are going to be very, very rare. So you will spend extreme amounts of time debugging. Overall, the company would likely save money from scaling up the database and not have the devs worry about these things. Not to mention, there are ways for the database to ensure serializability with high performance. Albeit that paper is fairly fresh, it was published in 2017, so it might not have been implemented in the relatively slow moving world of databases. But that's why you should make sure to enable serializable transactions. Please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.